here, buddy. It's, it's yes, it's late, but um, I run into an issue with my new Motorola surfboard cable modem on Time Warner Cable standard internet, which is rated for about 1.2 megabits up and 15 to 16 megabits down. With the previous modem, which was a Time Warner leased um, Aris Touchstone Telephone modem, it was the um, only one, as I call Time Warner Cable, piece of equipment that has um, the home phone integrated into the unit along with the um, internet. Um, when I upload videos to YouTube, my internet did not saturate out, meaning that I could still browse web. The internet still worked when the when something was getting uploaded to YouTube. But I dropped in some videos to upload to Bike Geek MTDX earlier, and my internet just pretty much just got choked off. And I mean, I couldn't load pages, and you know, the browser was saying check your internet connection, servers unavailable, you know, all that, all that crap. And so basically, I had to cancel the videos and then do some research. Turns out, you know, this surfboard modem is designed to be able to handle speeds. I think uplink speeds are like 100 megabits per second, like really fast. And it's funny to think that, I mean, you know, cable could give you that kind of speed, but, you know, they're, they're too greedy to do so. But, um, so basically what happens is the buffer ends up messing up and your internet gets choked out when you use an aftermarket or purchase your own modem like this so um, basically here's a solution to fix that problem when you're using a router behind that modem now some cheap home routers may not have this feature but um, usually if you have a router with DDWRT tomato or a nice access point that's like business class you should have features that you can use to fix the problem. Basically, I'm going to show you how to do this on DDWRT. And what you do is you go into your, you know, you access your DDWRT router by going to 192.168.1.1, hit enter. In some cases, it might be a different IP address. And then you'll, in this case, you'll go over to NAT slash QoS, quality of service, and, um, you may have to enter, you have to enter your login information to continue accessing the um, router. You switch it on here to the QoS tab, which says quality of service. Um, under QoS settings, you configure your WAN port, which is your wide area network or your internet connection. And basically here you will need to limit your uplink to something a bit lower than what your your maximum upload is. So it's suggested that you run a speed test on like speedtest.net. You take this number here, this 1.13 for example, convert it to kilo, kilo um, bits. So basically, we need to convert this to kilobits. So one kilobit is 1024. I mean, one megabit is 1024 kilobits. And you will just punch in, you know, the 1.13, and it comes out to be 1157.12 kilobits per second. In this case, you'll need to go back to your router's firmware, where it says uplink, and um, enter in a number for kilobits per second, lower, slightly lower, than what your speed test was. This way your internet won't choke itself to death when you're uploading something. <laughs> that way the internet can still be used. Because, I mean, my, in my situation, um, you know, there's other people that live in this house, there's other computers and smartphones hooked to this LAN, and I can't have the internet going out while I'm uploading videos like this. And on top of that, we have both the home phones, my personal home phone and mom and dad's home phone are both Magic Jack Plus home phones. So internet is crucial here now obviously in that case we do have cell phones but you know try to keep that home phone working as much as you can but anyways in this case I'm going to show you I can go and refresh this page and the internet is still you know usable of course it takes a little bit to 
to load things, but that's to be expected when you're uploading stuff like this. So basically, um, with your router, things will be different because obviously about every firmware is different on routers. But this is how you, this is probably a good solution. Now, let me, before I forget, um, on this downlink, you don't need to put that lower than your downlink speed. I mean, just put in some random number that's much higher than what you get from your speed test. Like I put 51,200 um, kilobits per second for downlink. I've never had internet that fast. The plan is for 16 down and a little over one up. So, this is how you can solve the problem if you're using your own modem and you have this issue. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask and, and let me go ahead and show you the um, previous video I shot when I was actually having the errors where I couldn't get online. I want to still share this with you but I figured I'd wait till last because this way you know the solution because prior I did not know. I, this is before I this upcoming video is going to be from before I stopped the YouTube uploads and found the problem. So anyways, here's that footage. Hey everybody. It is getting pretty late. This is the time of day that I upload videos to YouTube. And I had just put that Motorola surfboard cable modem into service and turned in the um, Time Warner cable piece of equipment, as I call it, that had the TV, I mean, um, had the internet and phone built into it. And I'm noticing a significant issue with this new modem. Other than that, it's working great, but here's the problem when you upload stuff to YouTube. You consume all your upload bandwidth. Now, Time Warner Cable, it's, in our case, it's only like 1.2, 1.4 megabits per second. And it used to be, you would just simply notice that pages would take a little bit longer to load. I mean, there was a delay, but you still had internet access. You could still get online and do certain and surf the web while video is uploaded, just at reduced speed. But it seems like this new modem here doesn't have enough common sense to throttle back, you know, a pro, you know, an application that's using all the upload bandwidth. There should be, you know, with the previous modem, um, I guess the best way to put this, it would be like you'd leave a little bit of reserve left for everything to work. But this new modem is like it's letting um, one application took up all the bandwidth. Now, for example, um, internet had just come back on. But yeah, basically, um, been able to get into the web interface on the moment just fine, but, um, for example, web pages aren't loading completely. Another example would be Facebook. Notice how it says I'm able to connect to chat. Try again. But the funny thing is, look at the Windows 7 network symbol. Usually when there's an internet outage, it will, it will actually put up a caution symbol there. But it's not there. That's because upload is working, but it's just being used. And usually, at least in, in my past experience, the modem would have enough common sense to not choke itself to death. It would leave a little bit of of leadway there for everything else to work properly. Like for example, I tried to reload a page here. It says server not found. This is in Mozilla Firefox, the application that's uploading you know the video to YouTube. I go back over here to um well TeamViewer now says that is connected, but um, if I go over here to this tab, I try to reload. It says unable to connect to the internet. Now this this poses a real significant problem for me. For a simple matter that when you're uploading videos to YouTube, it should not it should not um, 
completely shut off your internet. Your internet service should not, should not choke to death over videos being uploaded. Not only for the simple matter that it's an inconvenience when you can't browse the web, but we now have two Magic Jack Plus phones connected to the same network as this. What if somebody, um, you know, has an emergency? They need to call here, or what if an emergency happens here, and the first phone that gets picked up to dial 911 is a Magic Jack phone? Now we do have cell phones, obviously, but this—I mean, it's—you don't want you—you you, you don't want your phone to be out in certain scenarios. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting hold of Motorola's support. Now, I don't know if Time Warner Cable will be able to support me much here because obviously it's not their modem. But really, this poses a significant problem. And I'm curious if you guys have had this issue when you switched to a Motorola surfboard modem, cable modem. So anyways, I just want to share this. Kind of concerns me. So, anyways, thanks for watching.